different than what you would have done normal student life. So. Right. So we are having a bit of issue with the bits Wi Fi. Uh, I guess we are live. I guess we started the streaming. Just a minute. Okay. So, sir, so, uh, I guess we are live now. So, uh, good evening, all, and uh, welcome to the first guest lecture of Co op 2022. Tesla Motors is a name no living creature has unheard of in the past decade. We all know it is an American based smart automobile tycoon under the charismatic leadership of arguably one of the best entrepreneurs in the world, Mr. Elon Musk. Tesla Motors has taken the world into an electric rebellion. Now, for those who follow Mr. Musk, they must be knowing that he doesn't shy away from flaunting his engineers. And today, we are delighted to have with us one of those people about whom Mr. Musk can't stop talking about, Mr. Ganesh Venkatramanan. Ganesh, sir, is one of the founding members of the revolutionary silicon design team of Tesla, which delivered a revolutionary FSD computer that has set the industry bar for machine learning and is currently the senior hardware director and is working on Tesla's project Doho. Prior to Tesla, Sir had 15 years of work experience at AMD as a senior director, where he played an instrumental role in leading and overhauling AMD roadmaps to Zen K-12 course, prior to which Sir completed his bachelor's in electronics from Bombay University and his master's from IIT Delhi. With over 24 patents under his belt, Sir also serves as an advisory board member of Global Semiconductor Association. We are extremely honored to have such a guest with us. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Prakar. And thanks for uh, Bits Pilani Goa to um, invite me for uh, this festival. Um, delighted to share my thoughts and uh, share my experiences. So we are all looking forward to having a wonderful session uh, with you. We are, very, we are really excited uh, to talk with you and you know learn things from you. So uh, I guess now I open the floor for you, sir. The stage is all yours uh, and the audience. Okay. Is all yours. So I'll, I'll start sharing my yeah. screen. So I have uh, some prepared materials and then we can go over. Um, Q and A. Hopefully you can see it. Yeah. Yes, sir. OK. So um, I thought about uh, what I would have uh, looked forward to when I was a student just like you all. And um, I said, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to my experiences in the context of my career, uh, but um, I'll add some fun facts. Uh, uh, since this is BITS uh, festival, uh, I'd, I'd cover something about BITS uh, that probably most of you may not know, uh, but I've experienced that. Uh, my childhood influences, uh, my career journey, uh, things that I worked, uh, that I failed on, uh, and uh, approaches that help uh, folks build a uh, career naturally. And of course, uh, some Q&A time after that. So hopefully, you'll find this interesting. So to build a city of curiosity, uh, it literally takes a village. And uh, my story begins in Pilani. Uh, Pilani is what uh, shaped me, uh, believe it or not. And this is the beautiful uh, um, Bits Pilani campus, um, which I uh, remember as a kid. That's because uh, before Bits was founded in Pilani, there's this young man uh, who uh, met this beautiful girl. These are my parents. Um, they married, um, and uh, my father found a job uh, in early 50s uh, in um, Indian telephone industries. It used to be a coveted job for the government, working for a telephone industry just after independence, but he was not happy. Uh, he, he, he said he wanted to do something more, give back to the society. So he uh, moved all the way from Bangalore, um, where he was working, to uh, up north and moved uh, to a small place called Pilani, where uh, both of them were greeted by 
this. <laughs> and literally a camel cart um, where they put their luggage and uh, went into um, what was called as the guest house. Uh, stayed there. I believe that guest house still exists. And uh, this was how um, the story of Bilani started. Um, he was one of the founding members, founding faculties of BITS, who was recruited by uh, Dr. Uh, or Professor Lakshmi Narayanan, who was the first director of BITS. Um, this is my father. Um, he was a founding faculty, uh, retired 30 years later. Uh, he did many firsts um, at BITS. Um, he was the HOD of Tripoli, as well as Dean of uh, Academic and Registration Council. Um, and uh, this is the beautiful uh, BITS uh, administration building. So uh, he wrote a unique book. Uh, we'll cover about that later on. Uh, it's called Functional Electronics. Um, and I'll, I'll give you context on how uh, this changed my life. But plus some embarrassing pictures of me. So I'm the uh, youngest of four siblings, amazing, um, highly accomplished two older brothers uh, and one sister whom I look up to every day. Um, uh, on the picture on the left is me. Uh, for folks who have been to Pilani, this is the B-type um, staff quarters. And picture on the right is um, the Birla Science Museum. This is one of the places uh, if folks ever get a chance to visit Pilani, you all should um, look and uh, see this place. This is a beautiful place, um, creates a lot of curiosity. I mean, as a kid, I, I was always curious to go there, see things. Um, very few science museums uh, that I remember in India that exist of similar caliber. Well, uh, there was other things. Uh, my siblings, uh, my brother, older brother was um, uh, quite a bit older than me. Um, he used to come to a place called CD. Um, if um, this is not the Apple CD, but this spells with a C, uh, C-E-E-R-I. Uh, this exists in Pilani. It's a central government uh, electronics uh, research uh, institute. Um, he used to come there because he used to service some of the first computers that were um, deployed in India. Uh, this, um, the picture uh, out there in the inset is HP 1000 um, mini uh, real-time computers, uh, as well as HP 3000. He used to service those. But more importantly, I used to look forward for him to come uh, from computer maintenance company, CMC, which he used to work for, um, drive down from Delhi in an ambassador car. I used to hitchhike in that car. That was my vivid memory. So that's what I used to look up to. My other brother uh, gifted me um, something of a breadboard and things that you could put on simple circuits with. This, uh, I used to have a lot of fun in my uh, middle school years uh, with that. And then he also gifted me my first computer, which was uh, just pretty much a keyboard-like thing uh, that you attach to a TV. Um, it was called uh, DB Spectrum Plus. Um, this is how a lot of influence from uh, where I was and how uh, things uh, surrounded me. But long story short, um, I made it through school. Uh, I went to Bombay University uh, later on because my father retired from Pilani. Um, and this is me uh, getting my degree from uh, Bombay University. And after that, yoo-hoo, I got my first job uh, working for um, uh, a company in uh, SEEPS, which is uh, the export zone. Uh, a lot of the software uh, development was being done there. I got a job in fixing uh, year 2K, believe it or not. The world was supposed to come to an end in year 2000 uh, because uh, computers used to have uh, years nominate uh, in two digits, which was like 89, 90, et cetera. And as soon as you hit 2000, um, try to find the age, zero minus something else would have been a crazy number, which would have uh, the fear was planes will fall off the skies, everything will happen. So this was a big thing in India back then. Uh, so I was working in that. But 
uh, faced early turbulence. Five months in, I was fired. <laughs> I was fired because um, I refused to go to a remote place uh, where I had to, I, I was interested in solving the Y2K problem, but I was allocated a different project and I didn't want to go and I, I was fired. Um, and in those days, getting fired from a job was a big deal. Um, after that, uh, I was down for some time. Uh, I applied to many chip design companies because I said, hey, software may not be my calling. Uh, my initial days, I used to play around so much with hardware. So maybe hardware it is. So I applied and applied, mm, but nothing came out. Most of the companies said no. Uh, back then in 90s, there were very few semiconductor companies in India. And my brother-in-law, who's a faculty at IIT Bombay, and my sister encouraged me. Uh, I gave uh, the master's uh, examination gate. Uh, and then uh, this is my master's class at IIT Delhi. Uh, I did master's in integrated electronics and circuits. And uh, believe it or not, yes, Sitting on a computer was indeed a photo op back then because we used to get like uh, about one hour per week on a computer. Um, and we had to, we had to beg uh, some PhDs for extra hours that we wanted. Um, so that's how um, we completed or I completed with my a um, lot of my master's friends who um, uh, we still uh, get together and talk about a lot of the old days, um, and all of them are in pretty good places uh, right now in semiconductor industry. So I started my first, what I call as the real job, um, which is in hardware, uh, at Analog Devices in Bangalore. Um, this is where um, we were involved in designing um, DSPs, uh, digital signal processors, um, these go into uh, audio video receivers like the Denon receiver you see out there. Uh, after that, uh, I had an opportunity to work in Israel uh, on um, another project, um, Shark, uh, which was used on uh, a lot of missile guidance uh, related things. Um, and um, later on, I went to Ireland um, to work on um, a audio video decoder, which uh, um, in those days, used to be DVDs. Um, I, I don't know how many of you are familiar with it now, given the online uh, takeover of the world, but um, this was pretty state of the art back then. Uh, so I was very fortunate uh, because uh, Analog Devices CEO at that time said, <laughs> used to say there are three eyes in IT, India, Israel, and Ireland. And uh, I, I spent tremendous amount of time learning quite a bit from all these places. But um, on a break um, for a week or so from my assignment at, in Ireland, I'd come over back to Bangalore. And a friend of mine, uh, I was having dinner with a few friends. A friend of mine called me up, said, hey, um, write down this number and address. You got to come there tomorrow morning. I was like, what's happening? He's like, oh, and AMD is interviewing. Uh, you got to come there. It's like, okay. Um, so that piece of napkin, um, it so happened, uh, landed me uh, to AMD. And that's where I started my processor design career. Uh, did the first x86 64-bit uh, CPU. After that, I was leading um, x86 dual core CPU. This was the first time um, multi-core CPUs uh, were getting productized in a big way. Um, and then went on onto many, many different projects. Uh, also, um, I, I led the uh, AMD processor that later on went and established a Guinness Book of World Record for being the fastest processor. Uh, it is probably still the fastest processor um, on, on, on record. And then um, um, I was involved in resetting AMD roadmap to uh, Zen K12, which is uh, making waves right now. Uh, so I saw the entire process of RISE 
fall and revival of AMD through all my years from 2001 to 2016 there. But then um, I looked for a change uh, because my boss at that time, Jim Keller, who's my mentor also in many aspects in chip design, um, left and joined Tesla. And um, I joined Tesla um, in 2016. And some of the first assignments we got from Elon was, hey, uh, you may be silicon designers, but go and look at the factory, look at the ramp uh, that is happening and uh, fix all the problems there. Um, I had doubt that how will this work, uh, but this was one of the best things to happen to me um, because I got to go and look at the factory look at all the bottlenecks, look, figure out how to fix that. Given my chip design experience, I did not think going in that I would be useful, but it was uh, a, a eye-opening thing. Um, Elon was right, like we contributed in a big way, um, changed uh, many things in the factory, and uh, that's how Model S and X ramp uh, started. Um, but we came back to our day jobs, uh, which was uh, designing a computer that could drive the cars. Uh, this was uh, the vision that uh, Elon had. Um, we looked into um, the right pieces, how to make that happen. We, after all, we are electronics and chip design engineers. Uh, so we came up with something new. Uh, we did a chip from scratch. Uh, this is what drives uh, every test. Uh, in autopilot mode uh, as well as provides other safety features today. Um, after that, um, Elon um, um, asked us to focus on um, a lot of the AI technology. And this is what I lead right now, uh, training supercomputer called Dojo. Uh, this is um, um, what me and my team are working on uh, right now. But if you look at the overarching thing uh, that I, I, I respect, um, Tesla and Elon especially, um, is because there's a lot of first principles thinking here. Uh, if you think about what EVs used to be even in 2010, EVs used to be just this, golf carts um, and gas. Um, or petrol uh, vehicles used to be these kind of um, models of sports car, Ferrari. The first principles engineering is what got us to do EVs, which were, I mean, these were fast cars, these are desirable cars, and it happened to be an EV car. But it has changed the entire industry, if you think about it. Uh, the same gas cars, um, uh, this is called one of the super fast versions. Uh, it was not that super fast. Uh, if you look at uh, the acceleration from zero to 60, EVs, uh, especially Tesla, um, just redefined what was possible. And that is one of the reasons why even Ferrari, like firms, are going all electric. So. This is something completely turned the tables upside down. And that's the kind of first principles thinking of what's feasible. Is something that um, I would say is very crucial for folks to succeed um, in, in terms of their career. So I'll, I'll, I'll pivot a little bit about computing uh, out here because that same first principles um, thinking is what got us to evolution of computing. Uh, if, if you think about it, um, initially there was biological computers, literally in 30s uh, and 40s, uh, people used to compute uh, a lot of the things with help of some mechanical uh, computers. But if you think about uh, development and ev evolution of computing right from mechanical side of things to the first programmable uh, computer in ENIAC to uh, different sorts of compute uh, every decade. Um, we've gone from um, things that used to just 
aid us to things that are surrounding us with computing right now. Uh, but one thing you would um, probably, this is, oops. I don't know whether, okay. Um, so one thing that you'll notice, um, if you think about first principles, if you think about the underlying technology, all of these, sorry. Uh, going back. Um, all of these are algorithmic kind of compute. Uh, what's happening right now is we're transitioning to something uh, learning and AI side of the compute. Uh, this is where computers are going to learn just like you and me uh, learn things. Uh, it's just the beginning phase. Uh, this is going to um, just kick up uh, a notch in the in the coming few years uh, and then uh, go to ultimate potential of what's feasible. And since we are talking about AI, uh, there's a lot of uh, buzz around what's AI. This this proliferation proliferation is 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 going to be happening in your generations more than mine. Um, but uh, if you think about what it will enable is higher level of abstractions for humans, just like calculators and computers till now automated most of our computing. Um, this will automate many other aspects of our life uh, and, and it'll be more natural uh, to interface with and which you can see with, um, hey Google, hey Siri right now, uh, those kind of uh, people are conversing with uh, your computers. Uh, but it'll only um, go beyond what you see right now. But one thing to remember is fundamentals, uh, the things that you are taught in school uh, and colleges will still remain uh, pretty essential and, and should remain pretty essential uh, and be practiced still. So to sum it up on the AI side of the things, I would just say rather than fearing the technology as uh, many folks do, Make sure uh, your generation, you know how to have intellectual control over it and over yourself also in, in terms of how to interact with all of this technology around you. So going back to the first principle thinking and a um, um, lot of the approaches that we have to uh, tackle problems or uh, look at solutions, uh, something that I mentioned up front, uh, the book uh, that my father wrote, I, I, I never used to understand when I was growing up, but later on I read the same book. Um, and what appealed to me was, uh, his thinking was, it has to be an innovative way of teaching because devices keep changing. Uh, it has to be a functional requirement of something that needs to be taught to the students rather than a particular device or particular method in which it's uh, implemented. And this is this kind of comes with the curiosity. He was pretty curious about how things work. Uh, this is this will be something that you all uh, would benefit a great deal uh, by uh, creating that curiosity that leads to understanding functional aspects, fundamentals of something. And that's what leads to first principles thinking. Um, and, and it is pretty crucial in identifying these underlying things in anything that you do, not just electronics, chemical, uh, physics, any aspects, mathematics. Um, and just as an example, I don't know how many of you know what you're seeing out here, um, but I'll give it a few more seconds for you to guess. Um, this is a vacuum tube radio. Um, now, many of you may, may or may not know what vacuum tubes are. Um, vacuum tubes look like this. Uh, these are not minions, <laughs> these are, real devices. Uh, these are some of the first electronics circuits that were created. Uh, the cool thing about these, these vacuum tube radios was they had mood lighting. <laughs> so the way 
you would work with these transistors, um, uh, vacuum tube, um, um, not transistors, vacuum tube devices, uh, is you'll heat up just uh, a filament and that will conduct electricity um, from its uh, cathode to anode. Um, that's a picture of uh, what it, it, it does. This is a newer device uh, that does similar things, but at the base of it, it's just a switch. Uh, these things are switch. Um, these things are, um, in the digital world, they are switch. In the analog context, they are um, amplifiers and other um, aspects that you can uh, do with a transistor. So, and switches are basic building blocks of any computer. Um, that's, uh, but the switching technology changes. For example, used to be vacuum tubes and radio, and then um, came BJTs. Uh, <clears throat> these were called transistors. That's why we are called transistor radios sometimes. Um, integrated chips came along, uh, things shrunk. Um, you can see uh, more and more integration, more and more uh, form factor changes, but the fundamentals remain similar across any device side, any device that you have uh, out here. And this is the approach <clears throat> that I kind of understood way later in my life uh, after I read my dad's book, uh, as well as um, looking at things around and observing how things work. Now that kind of functional understanding um, feeds to innovation uh, in many different ways. Uh, you identify patterns, you identify convergence opportunities, et cetera. So <clears throat> just as an example, uh, this is kind of um, shows you how sound um, playback changed over time, like right from gramophones to records, uh, LP records to tapes to cassette players, CD, iPod um, phones from um, Graham Bell's initial phones to um, um, <clears throat> dial phones to cordless um, and uh, cell phones and uh, computers also had um, their revolutions as we saw. Um, but then um, <clears throat> curious thinkers think about what is fundamentally uh, behind these technologies and how to tie them. If you see um, uh, some of these smartphones, uh, the first smartphone that um, Steve Jobs created, um, and um, um, all of you have probably have one of those, is nothing but convergence of these technologies together to feed uh, new levels of innovation. So that's where understanding the functional aspects of each um, comes into play um, in, in, in my experience. So pivoting a little bit about building career, um, in my experience, it's not a science or art, it's, it's, it's a journey. <clears throat> so, Let's take the switch example and uh, a transistor. What I would say is uh, just look at it. Uh, I'm not going to teach you electronics here, but uh, just look at it as um, input um, that you provide, uh, which is represented by that VGS, um, um, which is a voltage that you apply to the input. And the output is uh, ID, which is uh, current that flows through the switch. A good switch has a lot of current going through it. It's similar. Uh, this is a curve of the transfer function um, <clears throat> for a transistor where you apply different level of energy. The higher the energy you apply, <clears throat> the higher results you get, the better outputs. So yellow has more than the red one. Red um, has more than the green point and uh, so on. <clears throat> but you'll see um, every of this curve, the like careers are like, our roles are something like these curves where every place will saturate, every career will saturate at some point. 
<clears throat> it's not important <clears throat> to just write it there but identify when to apply more energy to go from one to the next level like green to red red to yellow career is like that it's a journey you figure out uh, you identify where you are <clears throat> and you will get the signs and then figure out how to move to that next level and many a times you may have to go down before you come up onto a, the different levels and and this is perfectly fine um I, as an example, uh, uh, at AMD, everything was going fine. Uh, I, I had um, a pretty large group. Um, John Tesla, pretty much three or four of us trying to figure out what to do, how to establish things. Uh, it, things looked like, oh, it's a down step. Like, there's nobody to help, nobody. But that was the best thing in retrospect. It, it, it. It brought out the best things in us, um, all of us who are um, there today. Uh, it, it, it looked like, hey, uh, is this the place? But yes, I mean, that was absolutely a great place to start and then reach new levels uh, of uh, what is feasible. So again, these things uh, will happen in your career, retooling, rethinking, rebuilding, uh, and it's natural part. But what's crucial is to have curiosity to observe and learn from every step. Um, and then I would say, never settle with where you are and never give up when you're low. So um, these are some of the things I have learned. Um, the other part is uh, people don't talk about it um, that much is uh, failure. Failure is, pretty crucial learning step to success. And uh, if you look around uh, to uh, some of the practical examples, um, oh, um, and this is one of my favorite quotes from Elon. Um, if things are not failing enough, uh, you're not innovating enough. Um, but that doesn't mean <laughs> you work towards failure. It, it just means that uh, these are, you put in the best effort, you refine it over time and you get to better and better levels. You can see that from some of the examples um, from our sister company, SpaceX, um, um, of um, some of the initial failures. But all of that led to a lot more learning, a lot more things that were fixed. And you can see like all of that has resulted in many, many successful uh, missions uh, ever since that. So when you take these failures in your stride, learn from it, how to fix it, be curious about how to improve it, um, things, um, things settle for a really good um, trajectory later on. Okay, so um, some of the things that I would say <clears throat> that I have followed are Take my chances. Uh, I would encourage all of you to take those also. Um, go with your gut feel. Be curious about these functional aspects. Observe things around you. The, the need for something, uh, the existence of something, uh, the reasoning for why it exists, how it can improve. And take failures in your stride. Um, failures are natural part of what happens in um, any process. These are not something uh, that are setbacks forever. These are temporary setbacks when you put the right kind of energy to fix them. Um, nothing is granted. Doesn't matter what level, what uh, accomplishments folks have, it's always proportional to the energy that you're putting in today. That'll help you in the future. And um, this is something uh, I believe in. Success is not an event. Uh, it's an everyday lifestyle. Uh, that's what um, will give you most gratification. It's not because you've gotten a promotion or you got a job. It's what you do after that every day is what success is. And 
for the curious minds, learning never ends and it should never end. Um, this is what um, carries us through uh, to innovating uh, more and more uh, different aspects. Um, and, and frankly, curiosity is the one that has helped me even while doing the most boring jobs you can figure out how to improve it, how to make it better, or how to think about uh, doing it a different way. And um, that has helped me a great deal. So to sum it all, um, what I would say is keep, keep calm and stay curious and your career will be on an autopilot. So um, thank you. Uh, and uh, I hope this was interesting. Uh, so keep up the spark in Clark. Uh, and um, I would say, even though I didn't study at BITS, but I'm BITSian forever. So thanks a lot uh, for the Clark uh, Organizing Committee and uh, BITS Pilani Goa. Um, looking forward to uh, some questions and answers in any way I can help you. Thank you. Absolutely, sir. It was it was such a such a beautifully, sir. Explained the philosophy of life using uh, electrical engineering. I think it's something uh, people don't really, you know, uh, are able to do that easily. So great courage for sir for that. So uh, yeah, starting off with a question, I personally had a question in my mind, uh, which I, I would like to ask you. I mean, many of us dream to be in companies like Tesla, AMD. They are they are the big big players of the market. So, uh, I mean, I just wanted to ask, how's the work experience there? How's the work life? Uh, what competition uh, do people face in, in the company itself? And how's the overall, uh, you know, setting of the company, of the office inside? Sure. Uh, I mean, different companies have different cultures. Um, one thing I benefited from uh, is... Um, let's say analog devices or um, AMD were always uh, trying to compete with someone bigger um, like TI and Intel at that point. And that leads to a lot more opportunities to innovate, a lot more um, areas in which you can contribute just because it, there's no other way. You have to succeed. So. Tesla is similar in the sense that it is trying to change an entire mindset. It's it's and, and it's it's way beyond just competing with another company. It's like competing for the bigger good, like figuring out how things fundamentally are put together and work. How it should, like, what's the limit of physics, uh, as Elon puts it. Um, and that's that just creates a whole uh, new way of looking at the solution space uh, than what you would otherwise. I, I, I would say one of the biggest things that hurt like both individuals and companies is complacency. Like many of the big firms get complacent that, hey, we are here, we are succeeding, it's okay. No, that's where complacency sets in. And that's exactly where the downfall starts. So that's why I say like curiosity of what you, you can do better, how to improve yourself. Some of that um, is what I've been taught through some of these experiences also in these different companies. Different companies have different cultures, of course. Um, but one thing that ties them together is this um, kind of hunger to succeed either with a competition or um, to change something uh, completely in the industry. So another very common question which uh, people of my age especially do possess uh, is, I mean, uh, you have a great technical background and we all now know and we all knew how great speaker you are. So uh, people do tell us that uh, the speaking abilities and the technical knowledge uh, should go hand, hand in hand. And uh, that's where you can be very successful. But uh, what advice would you like to give to uh, someone who is not really good in at least one of them and how, how he, should, he or she should cope up? I, 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 I was not like this before. <laughs> Let me put it this way. I was pretty shy. Um, uh, and 
I was not. So it's everyone blooms at different stages in life. So it's it's okay. Not, not everyone will achieve similar things right away in their career. Um, I'm a late bloomer too, uh, but it's okay. Like all of us will hit our potential at different places. Like at, as you saw in those curves, like some of it is a product of uh, space and time in which you are many a times and the energy that you put in. So practice is the key thing, I would say. Uh, my first, um, time speaking in public um, was somewhere um, late in my career at AMD. Um, it, it's like leading a group, uh, leading um, things you have no other option. So to get that fear out of public speaking, um, it, it, you have to just practice. Uh, you have to get opportunities to, it starts small. It, it starts always with few people, few folks, uh, and then grows from there. Um, and in terms of technical skills, it's, it's again, like focusing on what is the fundamental. Uh, many a times uh, with all the automation around us, we start looking uh, under the hood as to what is the fundamental technology. And uh, that leads to, again, the same kind of complacency and stagnation. Uh, so um, another very popular question, which uh, I mean, I guess most of our viewers will also have in mind is uh, mo all of us are a huge fan of Elon, sir. So uh, what was your first experience of, of interacting with him? And uh, I mean, how did it go? <laughs> My first experience was uh, uh, he interviewed me uh, on uh, uh, in Fremont factory, which is a pretty noisy place. Um, and, uh, he has a desk at the, like, he's so hands on. He has a desk at the end of, uh, where all the cars, uh, come out. That's where I got interviewed. Uh, and it was a very noisy place and Elon is very soft spoken. So <laughs> many a times, uh, I, I was like, should I ask him what, <laughs> what, uh, what was the question and things like that? But, but it worked out. Uh, but I, I, I had uh, a very different um, kind of thinking about how Elon would be. Uh, uh, he's pretty soft-spoken. He's he's um, just like uh, to engineers. He just talks like engineers. He he, he relates to um, engineering uh, like any other engineer would do. So that's that's a great quality that I admire and uh, aspire to maintain also. So another thing uh, which is a very big boom right now in our country is working abroad. You know, people of our age, the dream of going into the US and uh, working for a big company. So I just wanted to ask you if what's the difference uh, between the work conditions in US and in India, since you know, have an idea of both of them. So uh, it, it, again, uh, it, it, it's a product of time and space. Uh, back in 90s, uh, as you could see from my story, like just getting a few hours on a computer was difficult. Like technology proliferation was not uh, that much. Information was only stored in libraries. There was no Wikipedia. There was no uh, online Google search or things. So that was the biggest barrier uh, back then, uh, there was very little information to go around uh, and opportunities for less also. Um, right now, it, it, it's the internet boom has made sure most of the places in the world are pretty much um, similar in terms of opportunities, exposure. Now it comes down to the energy that you put in. Um, so that's what I would say. Like it's 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 again a different time, uh, but um, opportunities today, the kind of uh, things that are available to uh, there was no startup culture. Like pretty much when I was growing up, there were Tata's, Birla's, um, maybe Ambani's, 
and uh, the government. Um, <laughs> so now it's it's a lot more uh, vibrant, a lot more uh, opportunities, a lot more creative thinking. Uh, that's the difference, I would say, uh, from the time I was growing up and uh, I had the opportunities in India. So, so now coming to my final question, uh, I mean, what advice would you like to give to college going students about how should they approach their college? Uh, so to get the maximum productivity and, you know, face the cutthroat competition that's to come ahead. I, I, I would say it's not about, uh, most of the times it's not about the best grades, but how much you are um, observed, like how much of the concepts you've gotten in. And it doesn't matter um, which field you are specializing in. Um, focusing on that fundamental and then building upon it is uh, the best way. The other thing I would say is um, stop thinking about the first job as something that um, you, you want to start earning something um, uh, in terms of money. Think about what kind of exposure, what kind of opportunities it'll give you to explore your full potential. My first job was pretty crucial in uh, determining how my career grew. Like it, it exposed me and, and a lot of us as well as just setting up the shop there. It exposed me to different aspects, which a mature company will not. Uh, and, and that has shaped me in, in every which way to think beyond just what is obvious. So advice to students like um, who are going through college, concentrate on fundamentals. Uh, grades are great, uh, they're important, but they are not the only thing that uh, matter at the end of the day. College is just um, giving you opportunities to learn things, but your real learning is ahead of you. So. Um, it's, it's just a starting point. Yeah, so that was great. Uh, that Those are the questions which I had from my side and uh, from the organizing committee side. So uh, yeah, so the hour has flown by really quickly. It's just hardly I could believe it's one hour uh, we've started the session. So uh, yes, I think I guess we'll wrap it up. Uh, so on the behalf of the Quark organizing committee, I'd uh, like to thank Ganesh sir for being here with us, uh, you know, taking time out of his uh, schedule. It's what, 6, 6 a.m. Uh, at the place where he lives. So uh, a great gratitude uh, for being here in such a odd time and, you know, sharing such great ideas with us and, you know, connecting us to the uh, electronics world and uh, the rest of the things the inspiration has provided us today has been uh, wonderful. This is a session which uh, I'll re definitely remember for a long time now. And I'm sure all the audience will as well. So thank you so much, sir, for being here. It was an honor to host you. Hey, thank you very much. And thank you so much for the uh, participants, the crowd, uh, to stay here with us. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the uh, YouTube live video. So yeah, that's it from our side. This is Prakar Karode signing off. Thank you. Yeah, so I guess we are done with the live stream. Okay. So hopefully, um, oh, so will will there be a link for that? Uh, so there'll be a YouTube link. Uh, 